Welcome back. Now, this show is all about the possibility that we could have been here before in a past life. So far, we've seen TV and radio personality Neil Fox take part in a regression session where he appeared to recall the life of Thomas, a 15th century carpenter who fought for revenge and murdered a baron. The reason I'm here is because I'm getting revenge. He is dead, and I put an arrow through his throat. The question is, do you think Neil was really recalling a past life? Have we lived before? Opinions are certainly divided. It can often seem very compelling when you watch people undergoing past life regression. The emotion that they're feeling is obviously so powerful that we think they really must be reliving those, those events. But just because the emotion is real, that doesn't prove at all that the memories are real. I believe that past life memories are carried in a part of us which is not physical because clearly it has to survive from one life to the next so they are soul memories for want of a better word now i think in this case andrea has given these people permission to act out a fantasy they can be for the time the cameras are running anybody they want to be and so that's what they do they want to please her in a moment, I'll be catching up with Neil for the first time since his regression. But first, it's time to see if our historian detective has managed to find any truth in Thomas's story. It's the story of Thomas, a humble artisan and a nameless baron. But back in the 15th century, these terms would have told both men exactly where they were in the pecking order because feudal society was the most structured we've ever known. Every man, woman and child would have known exactly where they were in it and the whole thing is encapsulated in the game of chess now the question is how could a mere pawn take on a knight of the realm and get away with it in unpacking this story we've discovered an extraordinary tale and this is how it starts i build furniture and i think i uh, play a lute so a carpenter called thomas well that's pretty feasible and a loot player well that's pretty possible too we certainly know they were around in the 15th century a sort of medieval guitar but what are the other clues he gave us we're in a bar and we're drinking and we're having fun what are you drinking a uh, computer tankards this also looks good though bars were called ale houses in the 15th century they weren't quite the pubs we think of today but you could sink a few beers and chat with your mates. But I think pewter tankards might have been a bit posh for a carpenter like Thomas. But then again, it could have been possible. So the details of Neil's daily life do look pretty convincing, but that's not all. There's one more thing that dominates Thomas's story, and that's Sarah. I sense a woman called Sarah. Uh, she's in a green dress. Uh, it seems like she's preparing food. Does she know that you have feelings for her? Yes, she does. And she loves me too. If we go back to the feudal system, that rigid and ruthless structure, it does seem impossible that a man like Thomas could get away with marrying the daughter of a wealthy baron. Love, though, is at the root of Thomas's story. It brings him ultimate happiness, but it's also the root of his problems. And it's in understanding those problems that the key to Neil's regression really lies. For some reason, I'm not allowed to see her. I am being arrested by people because I love Sarah. As Lord of the Land, it's likely that the Baron could have arranged for Thomas's arrest. Uh, he doesn't want me seeing his girl. According to Neil, it's Thomas's bitterness towards the Baron that leads him back after seven long years in prison to seek his revenge. What happened to the Baron? Uh, he is dead. Who killed him? I did. I put an arrow through his throat. The years of waiting were finally over. I'm with Sarah. Uh, her father cannot stop us being together. We have children now. But hang on. Just how could Thomas the Carpenter have pulled this off? Uh, I see myself sitting on a horse. And there are lots of other people around me on horses. So Thomas was not alone in storming the castle. Was he part of a larger rebellion against the Baron? Well, the 15th century was beset by civil war as the Red Rose of the House of Lancaster and the White Rose of the Yorkists battled for the crown. 
could it be that what Neil's describing is a small skirmish set within the Wars of the Roses? Amazingly, this works. The date, 1470, puts us just a few months away from a massive Yorkist victory. This battle was followed by 14 years of peace. So if Thomas was a Yorkist, he could literally have got away with murder. On the face of it, Neil's regression did sound like a fanciful tale. But once we got into it, the detail did match up quite favourably with the known history. So was he this carpenter-come warrior during the Wars of the Roses? You decide.